Hi, Carl. Hi there, Heidi. Hey, welcome to the third night of our Pathway Machinery Virtual Optimization Clinic. Great, thank you. My name is Carl Laux, and I'm a product specialist for Pathway Machinery. Um, typically, folks, we do these events live, um, either at the Salem Fairgrounds or at the Albany Fairgrounds. But this year, we decided to do it as a virtual event uh, so that we could bring this material to you folks before the season begins here. We felt it was very important that the information that we provide in these clinics, um, we have a chance to visit with you uh, before season because there's a lot of information and there's a lot of questions that you folks will have and we wanna make sure that we get that in front of you so you can optimize your equipment and make sure everything's running smoothly, smoothly and the productivity is as efficient as the machines can be. So. Okay, let's tell them a little bit about what they can expect tonight. Yeah, so the agenda for tonight is uh, we're going to talk about integrated solutions. Um, as you folks know, the integrated solutions uh, and technology piece of agriculture has expanded pretty dramatically in the last 20 years. And uh, it's an evolving uh, pro uh, process with uh, what we see in the combines, wind rowers, tractors, and, and all the equipment that we sell. We've got a, a pretty good team on board that uh, that is uh, very knowledgeable in this, this equipment. So tonight we're gonna talk about the, uh, the monitors, we're gonna talk about receivers, and at the very end, we're gonna talk about something on the combine that I get, I get excited about, which is uh, remote combine adjust. So looking forward to showing that to you guys as well. Yeah, that was really uh, fun to film and uh, learn about. So tonight, who is gonna be joining us? Yeah, so on the left there, we've got Tyler Lemon. Tyler Lemon has a, is, a, is our uh, precision egg specialist out of the North Lawn Valley, and Tyler brings a ton of uh, technical knowledge to us. Um, he knows this uh, technology better than a, than a lot of folks, and uh, he's really good at, at diagnosing and, and making sure all of that stuff works properly in the combines and wind rowers. And on the right, we've got Will Pardue. Will is uh, fairly new to the team. Uh, Will takes care of the South Willamette va Valley for all the precision ag. Uh, Will has, a, has also got a pretty extensive background in the technology side of, of GPS and stuff. He has a bit of military background, which that's what he did when he was in the military as well. And uh, we're, we, we're looking forward to having Will with us this harvest. So what's nice about this type of uh, platform is that we are able to interact with you. And tonight we have two different ways you can do that. One is the chat feature, which is kind of looks like a little big bubble on your menu bar. You can just click on that. That will open up the chat box or chat panel. And you can just type in your information right in there. The other is you can tap on those two, three dots, excuse me, not two. There's three little dots on your uh, menu bar. There's a Q&A icon that you can just click on. That will open up the Q&A panel. We've got Christine Cantamesa with us. She's joining us this evening. She'll be monitoring those panels and make sure that uh, the hosts get to see those and that your questions get answered. We look forward to talking with you and encourage you to please uh, enter your questions as they come up, uh, as this is live. We also want to thank those of you that submitted some questions during the registration process. We will address those also after the video. Um, and we thank you for joining us this evening, and we'll see you after the recorded portion of this show. Carl, I think. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I encourage you guys to type in those questions because Will and, and, uh, and Tyler are going to cover a lot of detailed information. Um, they did a good job of pre-recording these videos, and, and the information there is, is awesome. So. If you have any questions, by all means, type them in there. So the video is about 18 minutes, so we'll see you after the show. Yep. My name is Tyler Lemon. I'm a, the Precision Ag Specialist for the North Lamb Valley and CSA for the uh, Donald Store. I'm here with you guys today to talk about the uh, uh, the lineup we have with John Deere Precision Ag. I'm also here with my colleague, Will. My name is Will. I'm the South Women Valley Precision Ag Specialist, and uh, I cover uh, McMinnville all the way down to Roseburg for my, t for my territory. All right, and here today, I'm gonna start talking about uh, the uh, 4240 display. It's the smallest one we have in the lineup uh, today in uh, John Deere Precision Ag. Um, 
As you can see here, it is a uh, Generation 4 display. Um, it came out last year, uh, the spring of 2019. Um, it is a lot smaller display than you'll find with the, uh, with the uh, uh, bigger screens. It's a smaller screen. It is also IP87 uh, water resistant. Um, that way you can actually mount this thing on an open station tractor uh, and uh, it can uh, endure the weather uh, without any worry of the electronics and things like that uh, going haywire. Um, this display is capable of uh, uh, John Deere Auto Track and also documentation with section control. Um, that is a, 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 a big uh, activation that we use around here in the North Lima Valley. Um, it's nice because uh, this display is also uh, uh, priced in a way that uh, it's very affordable to uh, new guys who are trying to get into uh, uh, learning how to run auto steer on their farms. Um, so you'll look at the screen here. This is our Gen 4 layout. You'll find this in this display as well as the 4640 and a lot of the uh, command centers that you'll find in the combines and sprayers and tractors that we have out today. Um, so it's very familiar. Um, one of the with the latest updates, what you'll find um, is is also with uh, uh, 20-1, you can all you need, can now get a full screen display for uh, for your mapping. Um, before you can only get uh, just the middle section, and then you can you would have to customize the uh, sides any which way you would prefer. Um, now with 20-1, uh, you can. Uh, do a full screen. So that's uh, one of the nice features about the uh, latest update. Um, also to note with the uh, latest update, data sync is now in base uh, with the Gen 4 screens. Um, before it was an activation. Uh, now you can actually with an update get data sync. And what that does for you guys <clears throat> is uh, with all of the uh, spring and harvest data that you guys generate with these displays as a grower um, without a Without an activation, all you need is an internet connection in order to wirelessly uh, upload these uh, these data files to your operations center. Uh, so that way you can uh, uh, see them on your computer and uh, and uh, make agronomic decisions based on what you have done uh, in the field. Um, so a little bit more about the Gen 4 layout. So um, this is the first thing that you'll see uh, when you turn the screen on. Um, this is the default run page. Like I said, this is completely customizable to uh, whatever you wanted to see. Um, if this was actually plugged into a tractor, you can add um, your acres per hour, your uh, fuel use, your engine load, and things like that. You can make them all on one screen right here. So that's a nice feature uh, with Layout Manager. Um, on the bottom here, these are your uh, uh, quick reference uh, buttons. Um, uh, this is the uh, stock configuration. You can in, you can also change these to whatever you want to see. Um, the most you'll be using this this uh, uh, screen for is uh, you you can click on them and you can quick reference to uh, pertinent uh, data. Like for example, this one's the auto steer. Uh, it'll take you right to that screen without having to navigate into the menu. Um, uh, with that being said, so there's all your uh, quick uh, shortcuts again. Now you can go down here to the menu. So this is the main menu of Gen 4 um, on a tractor. You'll also have a lot more functions on here. This is a universal display, so and it's not connected into a machine. So you don't, all we have is maintenance calibrations. Um, so that's uh, machine settings. If you uh, scroll down one page down here to applications, this is where all of your uh, uh, AMS applications will live. Um, you have all the, you have a, a basic calculator on there. Um, you have your auto track guidance, uh, control setup, and things like that all the way through. You can page down. Um, a lot of you guys have seen this before, especially in the Gen 4 screens. Um, um, so all of that's in here. Also, you can go down here to system. You can see um, uh, you can change your date and time. If this was hooked up to a GPS or, uh, or JD Link, you can actually, uh, it'll actually uh, feed date and time data into this display so you can get a, an accurate uh, representation of uh, date and time um, wireless settings and things like that like i said with these new uh, with the new update with data sync um, all you need anymore is a uh, internet connection so that being you, you can turn your phone into a hotspot or you can use a wi-fi that's close to your shop um, this screen will be able to uh, hook to your wi-fi and once you have that internet connection established you it will automatically send all of your ergonomic data into operations center for you um, if you don't have that available, it still does have a USB 
in, input on the back so you can still download them onto a thumb drive um, and then take them manually onto your uh, a desktop or laptop computer and upload them to Operations Center. So um, that's kind of a quick overview of these uh, 4240 display. Um, one quick uh, note, uh, I get a lot of questions as a precision ag specialist. Um, uh, when was the last time my display was updated? You can go in here and do software manager and then uh, click on uh, version information. Now this display is brand new. I just took it out of the box uh, this morning. Um, it probably showed up here like a month ago and you can see that the last time it was updated was 2013. As we all know, that's not true. Um, so you, that's kind of misleading. Um, just make sure uh, uh, when you're when you're looking at these uh, their software versions and the last time they're updated, sometimes at first you can look at these things, you look at these data points and say, oh, it hasn't been updated in forever. That might not be true. Just the way these displays come out of the box, they don't know the time yet. And uh, so uh, kind of a misrepresentation there. So keep that in mind. Uh, I get that, questions, that question a lot in the field. So I'll just uh, making sure you guys are uh, aware of that. So, um, so that's the 4240 screen. Um, we're going to move, move over here next to the, uh, the Generation 3 uh, 2630. This is tried and true. Um, we've, we've, this has been around for a long time. It is still in production today. Uh, we still can get these new. Um, um, it's the Generation 3 layout, which you'll see aesthetically is a lot different than the uh, Generation 4. Um, although functionality, it is still uh, a, a, a good display and it works very much in the same. Um, on this screen, we had a, a uh, run page that had the that your guidance on the left and the right. On this uh, Generation 3 screen, um, you want to go down here into Menu, and you want to find um, GS3, that's Green Star, um, and this will be your uh, uh, guidance screen right here. If we had a GPS uh, plugged into this display, you would be able to see your mapping and your guidance lines and things like that. Um, this is also this is also capable of uh, of data sync. Um, it comes as an activation, and this requires an internet connection uh, via JD Link. So you still have to plug it into a tractor uh, that has a valid JD Link activation. And then this this display is capable of sending your data into our operations center wirelessly. So uh, other than that. Um, Hopefully this is very familiar to you guys. This display has been around for uh, quite a long time um, and it is still a good display for guys that are used to the Generation 3 layout. Um, like I said, aesthetically, it, it, they look a lot different, but they function very much the same. So, um, so yeah, that's your uh, 20 to 630 uh, universal display. Uh, from here, I'm gonna turn it over to Will, uh, my colleague, and he's gonna talk about the uh, 4640 Gen 4 universal display. All right, good morning. So with the Gen 4 universal display, uh, very similar to what Tyler, uh, most of the stuff Tyler's pretty much already covered. Uh, some some real key notes is the, the size of the display. Um, you, it's much larger, very, very versatile. The, these display, all of these displays can, are transportable from tractor to tractor. Um, are, and also the new Gen 4 display is, majority of your tractors are upgradable. You can uh, take your, 2630 display out and uh, put your 4640 display in and run the tractor just the same, if not better. <clears throat> uh, some of the key notes for this is uh, is the um, subscription base. Um, on this, you can actually do uh, not very much predominant in the uh, Pacific Northwest, but more so in uh, Midwest um, Valley you, in the uh, under the system. And we go back to Software Manager, like you mentioned before, and activations. The, underneath here you have uh, row sense and imp information sync, section control. Uh, most Some of these are used out here, some are not. Um, uh, but the big things out here are usually the uh, machine sync, section control, and, uh, and uh, implement guidance is what we see most people out here use for uh, planning and drilling uh, during, during the time of the season. Um, a couple other key features. Uh, this one has an auxiliary power button on the back. So if you're running in the tractor and you, and you just want to, and it's a hot day and you don't, you feel like it may overheat or something out there while you're running uh, minimal operations, you can turn, turn the display off and keep running the tractor uh, with no problems. Um, also on the back, you have two little feeler antennas. That's for your 
your wireless connectivity. Uh, with these, you can, you know, like I said, hotspot your phone, be close to a, a Wi-Fi facility within your, within your, um, your uh, uh, equipment barns or wherever it may be, and pull information off your off your equipment at any given time. Um, this one has a, a bigger uh, layout. It's a it's the same same thing as your 4240 display, but uh, it's very much more um, accessible for your uh, your layout manager. You can put a little bit more stuff on here, do a little bit more things. Uh, the big thing that comes with the Gen 4 display is uh, is uh, some of the um, the guidance tracks. You got boundary track with this. Uh, essentially, you can drive the whole entire boundary of your field uh, as you're as you're doing your work and create uh, guidance lines all the way to the center of the field. Uh, with no issues, along with uh, a couple other pretty cool uh, guidance lines for the row crop type um, applications, uh, lat latitude and longitudinal uh, guidance lines, so you can really dial it in and um, get your, uh, without damaging your crops. Um, moving away from this display over to our receiving side, the one that actually gives you guidance lines, we go over to our, our one of our newest generations. It's been, it's been out for a couple years now, but uh, just some key notes right now. The way we got it set up, we have uh, this uh, 450 radio on the back. It, what it does is it allows you to get RTK ability, which is sub subinj accuracy for the um, for your your crops. That way you're not you're not missing a beat or overlapping um, overlapping crops and uh, passes that you do. Uh, here with Pape, we we uh, we actually have our own broadcast network all over the valley from all the way north to south from from Portland to Roseburg and uh, over all the way over to the Cascades and on further. Um, very affordable network, uh, reliable and uh, and quick quick service. Um, with the with the 6,000 receiver, unlike its counterpart, the previous 3,000 receiver, uh, 3,000 receivers would only track one satellite at a time, um, which would cause maybe in and out um, signal loss throughout the fields. And with the new 6,000 receiver, you can track up to three satellites at a time. With uh, so essentially, what it does is, with with when if you're riding through a field and it drops a satellite within 50 seconds, it, it's grabbing another satellite to keep you continuing on with your mission of uh, getting the fields planted and um, crops, uh, crops, um, crops harvested. Uh, but other, um, it comes with three subscription levels or uh, uh, SF1 which is what comes with the device. It's kind of like the old WAS system, a little bit better. It's five inch, five inch pass to pass accuracy, non-repeatable, unfortunately, but uh, we're, we're slowly, John Deere is slowly making trends into the right direction. It, uh, SF3 will, will help you, like, give you repeatability without the added cost of RTK. And then obviously RTK being your highest level accuracy. And uh, that's, that pretty much wraps this up. Um, now I'm going to turn it over back over to Tyler to tell you more about uh, remote combine adjust. All right, Will. Thanks for that. Um, today we are in a S780 combine uh, demonstrating uh, remote combine adjust. Uh, what remote combine adjust allows us to do on any uh, John Deere S series combine with a JD Link Connect subscription uh, allows anybody with a internet connection, a, a My John Deere account logged in uh, to uh, their specific machine. Uh, it allows anybody to make uh, any of the five major combine adjustments remotely, uh, so you do not have to contact the operator uh, and uh, make those adjustments. Uh, all right, as you can see here on our Gen 4 4600 Command Center, uh, we have our five main combine adjustments right here on the main screen. Uh, rotor speed, rotor clearance, fan speed, uh, chaffer clearance, and sieve clearance. Uh, as an operator, you can go through here and uh, make all the adjustments uh, that you like. Um, but for somebody on the ground who is checking your machine for you, they have the option with, JD, uh, with John Deere uh, Remote Combine Adjust. They are able to make those settings for you uh, uh, on the ground. I have Carl Aux who is actually checking our machine for us as we're running uh, through the field and he's going to go ahead and make an adjustment for us so I can show you on the screen uh, what that looks like. Hi there, I'm Carl Laux, Product Specialist with Pape Machinery and today we're going to do a quick demonstration on the remote combine adjust. 
And it's really cool because we can adjust the combine remotely from in your office, on your um, iPhone, iPad, wherever you're at. Um, so I've got Tyler out in the combine in the parking lot. And so now I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to tell Tyler what I'm going to do, and we'll see if the combine adjusts it. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, Carl, who is on the ground testing our combine for us, has asked us to make an adjustment uh, right here on underneath current. You can see where all of our current combine settings are. Um, on the side here, you can see all the ones that he wants us to change. So we can see on the chaffer, he wants us to change from four to six. And what we're gonna do on the bottom here, we can just click accept. And you, can, and you can see right here that uh, the chaffer has changed itself to six. Okay, now I'm gonna adjust your uh, rotor from 430 to 460. Um, you can see here, he wants us to make a rotor speed adjustment from 430 to 460. Um, these are all of our combine settings. These are what we are currently set at. And these are the new combine settings that Carl wants us to change. The, uh, the ones that are lettered in bold are the ones that are going to change. So in this case, we're only doing one, the uh, rotor speed from 430 to 460. Uh, as an operator, all I have to do is down here, click on accept. And as you can see, it has already changed our rotor speed from 430 up to 460. So there you go, folks. We can adjust the combine remotely from anywhere on the planet, uh, as long as you have an iPad, iPhone, um, any type of uh, internet connection. All right, guys, thanks for watching our first ever Precision Ag Virtual Optimization Clinic. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the field. Thanks again for joining us this evening. And if you hold tight, we're going to go back to the studio and answer some of your questions. Thank you. Okay, and we're back and we're going to bring on our panel. I can see Carl. We're going to wait for Will and Ty to join us. Guys, got your cameras on. And we're going to, Will was having a little bit of a problem with his camera when we first started. So, Carl, I know you got some questions. I didn't see anything on the Q&A coming in yet. So, I want to yeah. encourage our attendees to. Yeah, uh, we have a question on the Q&A. Great. Do. Good. Yep. So guys, what do you think of that remote combine adjust? Is that cool or what? I mean, the first time I saw this was about two years ago and uh, when, when Deer introduced it and I got excited about it back then. And then this, this year we actually got to play with it. So it's, uh, it's incredible. But uh, anyway, let's, let's go to one of the first questions we got here. I'm gonna give this one to Tyler. Um, and it is, can you perform RTK steering on the smaller 4240 display? Yeah, I got to unmute there, Tyler. Yeah, all right. You can hear me now. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. So with RTK, you can uh, you can you get you can get it on the forty two forty display. That's a smaller screen that's in the lineup with John Deere. Um, the really what it's come down to what Deere has done in the past is you had to get a certain auto steer activation SF one or SF two compared to uh, what correction level you're doing on the receiver. Um, that has gone away, and now uh, we're down to uh, whether or not the display, all it needs is an auto track activation and then uh, uh, whatever correction level you want to run with the receiver, you just have to have, you just have to activate it accordingly. And uh, um, so with the, with the 4240, as long as you have the 6000 up uh, activated for RTK, it'll work just fine. Perfect. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, Will, can you hear me? Uh, we don't have your video. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Okay, I got a question here for you. Um, can I do field boundaries with my gator utilizing the 4240 display? Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's just like any other uh, guidance setup. Um, 4240, 2630, 4640. Uh, they're all because they're they're portable displays essentially, not the hard mounted like the 4600 mm -hmm. or or the uh, armrest displays. You can you can take those and pretty much attach them to anything as long as you can you have the right uh, harnesses and uh, you know powering ground and you, you're good to go and go you can go out and map your boundaries and then 
take those with a USB and plug them into your display that you're going to use on your tractor or even throw that one in a tractor and use those to go auto track around your field and do your work. Perfect. And Tyler, I think they make harnesses and receiver brackets for the gators now, don't they? Yeah, yes, they do. Um, they're available. Uh, you can talk to Will and I about uh, looking up specific ones for your gator, but they're all available to order through the parts department. Perfect. Um, here's another one. I'm going to give this one to you, Tyler. Um, how well is the cellular connection working for accuracy on the cellular network? Uh, for in terms of uh, uh, mobile RTK? <clears throat> yes. Um, I, I think it's, it's working very well. It, uh, the, the advantage to running mobile RTK is it is flexible. Um, um, with uh, radio RTK, um, you are limited, well, I want to say limited, but uh, um, you have to be within uh, range of one of our towers. Um, we've strategically placed them, placed them in the Willamette Valley, so um, about 90, we have about 90% of coverage um, in the Willamette Valley, but a lot of growers, uh, uh, the only reason, one of the reasons I sell uh, mobile RTK is growers who have ground over here in the valley, but they also work somewhere uh, east of the Cascades, maybe, uh, you know, way out west in eastern Oregon or things like that, where we don't have a, uh, a system uh, for obvious reasons where uh, we don't have uh, uh, anything like that out there. So mobile RTK is a great solution for guys that have ground in, in both areas and want to achieve RTK in both areas. Um, uh, you don't have to go around and set up base stations everywhere you go. Um, so mobile RTK is based on a cellular connection. So uh, for the most part, as long as you have a good cell reception, um, you're going to have uh, RTK on your tractor. So that's a huge advantage. Uh, what John Deere is we're able to do things like that. Perfect. Good. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, I would, um, um, hey, Carl, ahead, I, would like add, I would just like to add in if um, for those who are using the PAPA network or are considering using the PAPA network, if you might download the PAPA app, you could you actually can for for your convenience, say you move from uh, one part of the valley to the other, you actually can go into the PAPA app under the RTK network setting and look at the uh, find the network ID, the plug-in, and the frequency. Perfect. Good, good. That's good information, Will. Um, I'm going to put this one back to Tyler here. You've got yourself unmuted. Okay. Um, what program does John Deere have in the 4640 to, to do landforming and leveling? Right. So John Deere, we with John Deere we do have a, a I grade that is a, a an activation. Um, you can it is it is capable. It came in with the 2630 displays, but uh, you can run it with either that or also now uh, the 4640 display. Um, what I grade allows us to do is uh, um, operate uh, hydraulics that are on an implement, say a, a land plane or a, what we we sell our iron tree swing blades. Uh, we're able to control the height. Uh, um, with the with an application controller and uh, achieve grade. Um, one thing to note with iGrade, we actually are also uh, a Terracutta dealer. They're the, a, a third party software um, that we use here in the Lamont Valley. We have a couple of guys that are running it. And um, uh, basically, uh, to sum it up, uh, uh, Terracutta is a is a, a software that really truly unlocks the capabilities of of uh of land forming uh to the point very similar to uh, like a construction uh type equipment um um like you were saying earlier like with with the with the gator you what we can do if we were to set up a receiver and a uh, display in a gator you can actually take it out uh, the first thing we need uh for uh, that kind of software like I grade and terracotta is we need elevations uh, an elevation plot is what we need so um, you if you don't already have those uh, you can you can get that done very quickly and easily with a gator um, you can also do that with uh, a combine or a tractor that's already in the field as long as it's unlocked and recording uh, uh, al uh, altitude but what terracotta um, allows us to do with that with that uh, with the uh, altitude uh, software, you can bring that in on a computer program and uh, look at your entire field. And uh, Terracutta, what it allows us to do is watch uh, uh, how the land is formed, and you can simulate rainfall and things like that, and really see it gets down to the yards of dirt that you want to move, and you can really adjust for for what you want to do uh, in your field. And uh, uh, it's as simple as taking that file onto your your tractor and then you just go you just drive back and forth until you 
achieve the right grade and the the blade is fully automated which is super nice it's going to cut where you want to cut and it's going to feel where you want to feel and you don't have to worry about a thing so <clears throat> that's good that's good information mm -hmm. cool um this one i'm going to give back to you will okay um what is the pass to pass accuracy with sf3 and how long is the repeat repeatability good for all right good question so the SF3 you're looking at, um, what John Deere puts out is it's about, it's pretty much the same thing as R2K, it's 1.2 inch pass to pass accuracy at, uh, and with nine months repeatability in season. So the, the lines that you would create today, um, if you were to go six, seven months from now are the same lines you'd be able to fall on then and it wouldn't change, wouldn't, wouldn't move on you. Uh, so that, that that's kind of the the upside of doing it that way, and it's also good for guys who are aren't in the RTK network. You know, don't have good line of sight to the tower, or maybe maybe the um or don't have good radio um, cell phone coverage for a mobile RTK. That is really the best bet, especially uh, some of our customers out in the McMinnville area where it's super hilly terrain, or up in the north. Mm -hmm. Um, so very 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 useful tool for the accurate planning and drilling um, time of the season, and even when rowing as well for your round and around guys. Good, good, very good, Will. Um, this one I'm gonna give back to you, Tyler. Here's another question that came in. Uh, with remote combine adjust, can you set perimeters with alarm settings that will not notify me of a setting that is out of range? And can I see that remotely? Right. Um, there is not a function uh, in order to set uh, uh, alarms for it to be able to go off and alert you that a certain setting is out of range. Uh, unfortunately, um, the way the way the works with uh, with JD Link, you with Operation Center either through an iPhone or iPad, is you have to uh, navigate to the combine and look at it, and it reports to you uh, what the settings currently are. Um, I can imagine that would be a feature. Um, that deer would be considering in the near future, but for now, uh, I, I know that it's not a capability. <clears throat> good, good. Here's another one similar to that, uh, Tyler, is uh, can you access the combine tailings and clean grain cameras remotely to help with adjustments? Mm -hmm. And are any of the remote features available for the S660 and the S670 combine? Right. So the first part of that question, uh, accessing cameras remotely, uh, that is not a feature we can do as of now. And I know only, the reason I know this because I've tried that exact same thing um, um, with a program we have uh, called Remote Display Access, where uh, anybody the same way Remote Adjust works, where you can log in and actually view in real time what the screen is looking like. Um, uh, one thing that, that if the operator was to navigate to a run screen that has a camera on it, you won't be able to actually see what the camera uh, is actually seeing. So um, that is not a feature that's available. And uh, uh, the second part of that question, uh, the remote features for the S660 mm -hmm. company, currently uh, there's not. It is only available on 2018 model year S series combines and up, which that basically means 700 series S700 series combines. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, and here's one last question. Um, Tyler, this will be for you too. Can I see more than one combine when I'm viewing remote combine adjust? Right, you will not, you, you don't, you're not able to see them uh, side by side in real time. I know we, uh, this is something that even uh, you and me, Carl, were asking about before. Mm -hmm. Really nice yep. if you're running a fleet of combines to be able to look over and see all the settings on every single one of them and ideally match them all to be the same. Um, but currently, no, you have to, in, in the operations app, you have to navigate to each uh, machine individually and scroll over to the settings tab and it will tell you each combine uh, settings uh, for one combine on a time. But like that being said, it's not super difficult if you're already in the operations app to navigate really quickly over to the next combine and be able to see what its combine settings are. Perfect, good, good. Uh, another question just came in here, uh, and I, let's see, either Will or Tyler, either one of you can answer this one. Is any additional hardware needed to run SF3 as opposed to SF1? 
No, no additional hardware, just a, uh, you, it's an activation um, buy up and a subscription. So, so your receiver comes with SF1 uh, standard. I'm sure he, the customer already kind of knows that. Um, but SF3 is an activation level. So you buy into the activation level of the SF3. And then um, after that, it's just a, a yearly um, fee. So the activation is one time, subscription is yearly. Okay, so it's just a subscription change is what it is to go from SF3 or SF1 right. to SF3. Yep. Correct. Good, good, perfect. Yep, and also, okay. I'll ask Carl, the, uh, mm -hmm. there, is, um, uh, there is availability for uh, on SF3 subscriptions, you can get three months, uh, six months, one year, two year, and up to three years at a time of SF3. And of course, the pricing is tiered. So the more uh, time you buy, um, the the pricing and why we want to say per month is, is it's a better deal if you buy more uh, mm -hmm. time. Sure, very good. That's good to know, Tyler. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions that we've got that have came in so far. Um, but before we leave the question and answer here, um, I'm going to ask you guys, Tyler and Will, to answer a question for me. If there's one suggestion before the season starts here, before harvest, what what's one thing that you would uh, give advice to a customer to do on their integrated solution products in their combine, their windrower, their tractors, uh, whatever that would be? What's one suggestion? Um, I, I'll answer first. So uh, one of the first suggestions I have, um, if uh, a lot a lot of guys are asking if if their if their machines are are capable of uh, of yield monitoring uh, in their combines, I want to say uh, they want you know people ask me can I yield monitor um, with my combines and if we're talking about 660s or 670s, um, that function is already available to use in those combines. Um, a lot of guys are probably not used to it or not setting not used to setting it up completely, but uh, uh, one thing I would pre-season check is uh, just go ahead and pull it out of the shed, um, turn on the rotor, turn on the feeder house, and uh, um, um, if you have any more questions, you can call me or Will, but we can get set up, and you basically want to simulate the track, the combine actually uh, um, running in the field, and we can show you uh, how the yield monitoring is happening, and possibly even capture some of the data that already has existed um, on your machines, and we can get them into operations center, and you can see um, um, what those what those machines are doing in terms of yield monitoring. Because, like I said, uh, with the with this S series combines, um, all the hardware uh, comes in based on those machines to where you are already doing uh, yield mapping um, um, on those machines. With I will say, you do have to have a, a six thousand or three thousand gold uh, on the cab. Uh, in most cases, that's already mm -hmm. there. So. Uh, yeah, that is one thing you need. But yeah, I would encourage you just get it out and turn it on and simulate running through the field and uh, watch what your yield monitor is doing. Very good, perfect. Anything you would suggest for the customers, Will? Yeah, I uh, so a bunch of the, some of the things uh, like Tyler's already kind of hit on is you know make sure that all your sensors are operational. Uh, if the stuff, if some stuff has hasn't been calibrated for a while or um, seems a little bit off, you know run through those calibrations and if you're not sure you can always call one of us um and we can come out and try to uh, coach you through how to do it that way you can get the rest of your fleet going um, make sure that you can get logged into your operations center if you're using if you're a heavy user of your operations center if not we can come out and show you that as well uh, another thing um is tcm calibrations um for the, which is your terrain compensation module i've, I've gone to many a tracker um and seeing that the terrain compensation module not uh, has been calibrated in a while, and that's pretty critical for guys in the more hilly terrain, and you know have the weird weird slopes, and so that the the receiver knows what zero is, and and um, and uh, basically level itself out and hold your line a little bit better on going across those types of terrain. Perfect. No, that's good advice, Will. Um, I see another question came in here, Tyler. Um, can I RTK with AutoTrack Universal? Yes, uh, you can. With the AutoTrack Universal, for those of you that don't know, it's a uh, um, the uh, steering wheel unit that we can uh, attach to uh, the steering wheel of most any uh, ag machine. Um, it allows uh, allows you to run uh, uh, auto steer on uh, uh, for a very inexpensive price. And the answer is yes, you can run auto steer. Uh, with the ATU um, uh, 
Although I will say the uh, with with RTK your sub inch accuracy, um, so it's highly highly accurate compared to SF1 or SF3. Um, I will say with an ATU and most uh, most older machines, it's uh, when you get to that level, um, you're really the tractor is only going to be accurate as the the health of the steering system, and I'm talking about like uh, uh, hydraulic cylinders and your your ball joints and knuckles and things like that. Um, those are pretty well wore out. Um, um, I've seen that several times where you're just in an older machine uh, and it, it uh, with RTK, um, you want to have those systems up to stump, everything tight. Um, as long as everything is tight, you're going to get uh, sub-inch accuracy uh, with that system. So um, if you, you want to, you can call me or Will or any of your CSAs and we can come out and take a look and, uh, and uh, get your steering systems uh, all, all put together uh, up to snuff so that we can, so that we can achieve RTK. Uh, with those machines. Perfect. Very good. Thanks, Tyler. Um, we have another question came in here. Is there any way to pull a topo map while operating, a topographic map? Right. Um, with the, yeah, the answer is yes. There is, a, um, with your swath or sprayer or any machine that's running in the field, um, you do have to have the eye grade activation uh, in order to be recording uh, uh, basically your, your topography of your field. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the many ways we've actually done it in the past is uh, um, uh, combines or windrows, especially if you're already going to have those machines in the field working. Um, we can set that program up to run in the background so it can capture the, that topographic data um, for future use with your uh, Terracut and iGrade software. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes, we can do that. We just have there's a little bit of, uh, of a, a preliminary setting up in order to uh, get that function working properly to where we can use it. Good, but we can gather the information with a swath or the combine um, or a tractor. Right, anything Good. with anything with the, G, with the 6,000 or 3,000 receiver on it, yes. Perfect, good, good, good. All right, um, great questions, guys. I mean, looks like we're out of questions for the moment here. Um, by all means, if you've got questions, keep typing them in. Um, but we had some really good questions tonight. So, um, Heidi, are you back on there again? I am. I want to uh, let people know that we are recording this session tonight as we did the other two nights. We will send you a link um, as soon as we're able to take a look at them and make them available to you. But we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we hope you learned something, that you can apply it to what you do, and that you're able to connect with our knowledgeable and experienced team members. Uh, we have 23 locations across Oregon, California, Washington, and Idaho. We have precision ag specialists at our locations. And so uh, if you are not in the Willamette Valley, I encourage you to reach out to your PAPA dealership close by and uh, get your questions answered. Perfect. Does Again, anybody, if you get, yeah. Yeah, if you guys have questions, uh, keep typing them in. Or if you if you don't, Heidi's gonna show us a link here um, that you can type in and, and ask those questions and we'll make sure that the answers come right back to you. So Carl, what so, I yeah, do here, is I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I gave you them your email address. So. That's fine. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. And I'll make sure they get directed to the appropriate TM uh, wherever you folks are, are from. So by all means, send them, and we'll we'll get the questions answered for you. Yeah. Uh, I I was going to add another thing. Um, so we have I don't know if any of a lot of the customers here have been checking their emails lately, especially with all the nice weather that goes in and out with the the rainy season that's upon us. Um, but there's uh, if you're utilizing your operations center and for us to be able to start RDA, which is remote data access into your displays and to continue doing that, uh, John Deere has put out new terms and conditions for you to approve. Uh, if you need help with that, reach out to Precision Ag or your or territory managers and uh, they, can, they can assist you or, and they can get with us and we can get you those emails out and to make sure that you get those good emails um, and so you can access your equipment and see it when it's running in the field and get your uh, maintenance maintenance hours and um, and all that stuff. And that way we can better help you even when we're hours away uh, on Johnny on the spot. Uh, also uh, a good use for the operation center and we'll be covering 
and later videos in our how-to series uh, that's going to be coming to the uh, the Pape website and our YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. Is um you how-to videos on doing uh, some of those tricky guidance lines and um, utilizing uh, functions like machine sync, um, the, the new exact apply system for the sprayers, all that stuff's to come. Um, just stay, so stay tuned for that, and that's kind of the big keys that I want to put out. But please go out and uh, help us help us help you with uh, updating your terms and conditions on your um, operation center. Great. Good. I got one more question that just came in, Tyler. You want to answer it for us? Sure. Okay. Can you uh, push info from the op center to Ag World directly? Uh, yes, you can. Um, so with uh, John Deere Op Center, there is uh, what we call APIs, um, which are basically cooperative um, 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 data links, if you will, um, to uh, between like John Deere and other um, um, uh, companies who make similar programs like Op Center. Um, AgWorld is one of them, especially pretty prominent in the Willamette Valley. And uh, uh, in order to do that, uh, you would have to navigate in your operations center to uh, more tools and uh, click on the Ag World API. And uh, from there, it will direct you to sign into your Ag World account. Um, uh, once you're signed into your Ag World account, there's a uh, short step-by-step uh, -step process, but uh, it will allow you to sync your operation center and your Ag World uh, accounts together so that uh, uh, all your data, um, even though it's two different uh, software, you know, pieces of software, um, the, all the data is the same, so. Cool, very good, very good, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, looks like that's all the questions. Uh, again, I want to thank you folks uh, for joining us here this evening. And uh, if you've got questions, email them to my email address. I'll get them to the appropriate TMs and, and we'll, we'll get those answers for you. So with that, thanks for joining us. There was a ton of information in here tonight, I know, um, but uh, we, we tried to condense it as best we could, but I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. A um, number of you have joined us all week. We thank you for spending your time with us, mm -hmm. and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Take care.